Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high-value, hi-fi home theater and headphone equipment. And today, we're talking about Polk. I've always loved Polk. So, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, or your favorite cold beverage. Let's talk about some Polk Signature Elite home theater speakers. I've had a bunch of Polk speakers in my house, and I still do. In my son's room is the entire RTI series, I think. Six and a half inch bookshelves, huge, and I mean huge center channel. Buy and die polar surrounds, two subwoofers, all in his room, right upstairs. If you've seen any of my old videos, you may have heard that system, because he's watching Lord of the Rings or something. Also have T15, right over there. T15's old cheap speaker from Polk. Also have the S15. That's in my daughter's room. This is not the S series. This is the reboot of the S series. Signature Elite. Although their model number starts with ES, which is kind of the opposite. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You have the ES15, ES20, ES35, whole bunch of speakers in the ES series. This is not their lowest tier speaker, but one step up. So the T-Series, or now it's the X-T-Series, is their most affordable line. From most expensive down to least expensive, the current Polk lineup is the Legend Series. I don't know how long that's going to be around, but you can still buy the Legend Series. Then right underneath that is the Reserve Series. I've done some reviews on those. Then underneath the Reserve Series, it's the ES Series. And then finally, the X-T-Series. So Polk was kind enough to send me the entire 5.1 set. This is gonna be a bit of a daunting video because I'm going to talk about the center, the surrounds, which are the ES15s. They don't just have to be surrounds. And then the uh, tower speakers, ES50s. So I did all of my listening, testing on the uh, Pioneer VX305. I think there's a VLX in front of there. I turned Dirac on and off. So initially I listened to Dirac off. And if you don't know what Dirac is, it's a very complicated DSP engine. So it samples your room and then it throws out EQs, time alignment, things like that. Very similar to what a lot of receivers have as in room setup. So Odyssey, there's others depending upon the receiver you have. But Dirac, Dirac is a little bit more involved than that. I ran these with and without Dirac on. So let me show you. Ooh, let me show you the center speaker. One of the coolest center speakers I've seen. And I know some people might not be a fan of this design. Personally, I was always wanting to hear one like this. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, three inch drivers, and then a one inch soft dome terraline driver. And then on the back, there's two ports. And those ports are covered up by wall hangers. And it's not just a wall hanger because the port itself has a, well, has a shape to it. Kind of like an upside down funnel. That port is directing air out, not just backwards, playing traffic cough. So this port is playing traffic cough with the air coming out of the speaker. Okay, it's pretty cool. Look at this thing. I love, I love how this looks. And then the grills are magnetic. Magnetic on everything. So. Magnetic grills on the towers, magnetic grills on the center, magnetic grills on the ES15s, which I use those as surrounds. ES50 towers. All right, they have two five and a quarter inch uh, mica reinforced polypropylene dynamic balance cone drivers. Then it has the one inch soft dome terraline driver. Frequency response is reported from 38, pretty low, 38 up to 40,000 Hertz. Towers have a sensitivity of 88 dB. Sensitivity means how loud a speaker plays at a given power rating, one watt at one meters, but it's supposed to be. But all speakers have a different sensitivity, which means some speakers are louder than others at the same power. 88, not super low, not super efficient. Pretty standard for speakers in this era outside of Klipsch. Klipsch have a tendency to be more sensitive. Eight ohm impedance, nominal impedance, which means this speaker, this whole set of speakers 
is meant to play well with surround receivers, AVR receivers. So you don't need a super high current receiver to drive these. Anything's gonna drive these speakers with the exception of maybe a tube amp, but you're probably not buying these if you have a tube amp. You're probably looking at these because you have a home theater receiver. About 38 inches tall, 10 and a half inches wide. It's 11 inches deep, so not super deep. I got these pretty close to the wall. And because of their port technology or the way, it is, the way that it's designed, you can get these pretty close to the wall. We'll get into sound later. But these really, if you're into towers, are gonna fit into most rooms. Not too big, not too small. They're good size, good medium size. Goldilocks Tower. All right, ES35, the center speaker. Okay, I really like the speaker. Six three inch mica reinforced polypropylene dynamic balance and R with a circle around it, drivers. One inch soft dome, has wall mounts. So I showed you before, this is the covering of the port, also doubles as a wall mount. So this thing will mount right on the wall. It's pretty heavy though. So this is about 15 pounds. If you dropped it on your foot, it's gonna hurt. Frequency response on this thing, 66 up to 40,000 hertz. 66 is a pretty respectable rating for something that's like so little like this. This is the size of, this is smaller than most sound bars. I love it. I love the design. Do I love the sound? I don't know. You're going to have to stick around. I love the design. Um, 89 dB sensitive. And I think the reason is, is because they have so many drivers probably in parallel, so it raises the sensitivity up. 8 ohm impedance, 5 way bonding post. The towers also can be bi wired or bi amped. About 24 inches wide, uh, 4 and a half inches tall, and then uh, what is it? 6 inches deep or so. Very cool. All right. This is the ES. 15. This is actually my personal set. I purchased these before Polk ever reached out and wanted to send me some. Five and a quarter inch poly polypropylene reinforced mica driver. What is it? Yeah, mica reinforced polypropylene dynamic balance cone driver. And then a one inch uh, soft dome Terraline tweeter. On the back, kind of similar. You get your power port technology also doubles as a wall hanger. So these will go right on the wall if you want them to. Five-way bonding posts. Um, this is a little bit bottom heavy. <laughs> All the weights down here. So it's like it's gonna tip over a little bit. I have a dedicated review on these, which I'll put right up here. If you wanna check out that review, you certainly can. I go into much greater detail about the ES-15s by themselves. And then rounding out this 5.1 set is the HTS 10. It's a 10 inch, 100 watt RMS subwoofer. Ported, big, pretty big. Has a rated frequency response of 30 up to 120 hertz. The bookshelves, even the ES-15s are rated all the way down to 44 hertz, up to 40,000 hertz. Thing to remember about Polk is they do bass extension pretty well. They've got it figured out. These ports, are, they work. Okay, retail pricing on all these. The ES15, which is the bookshelf speakers, they come in at $300 a pair retail. The tower speakers, which are the ES50s, they come in at $700 a pair, $350 a piece. Center channel, which is the ES35, that comes in at $400 a piece. And the subwoofer also comes in at $400. Bear in mind, all of these are retail pricing. Now, if you combine the set, if you buy it all together, it comes in at, I think it's $1,500 and seven, $1,570 is what it comes in at, but you have to buy it all together. If you buy it separately, it comes in, I don't know, what, $1,800? Yeah, so it comes in at $1,800 if you buy all these separately at retail. Here's the thing to remember though, um, these regularly go on sale. So if you're just buying the towers or just buying the bookshelves, they will go on sale or you can buy it as a set and save some. Okay, sound wise, the tower speakers, well, they hit very low and this is going to be a reoccurring theme with Polk in general. They do bass extension very well. Is it the tightest, most articulate bass on the planet? No, these are $700 tower speakers, which will go on sale probably less than $600. Pretty punchy on the bottom. I wouldn't call these like super sparkly on top. There is detail, there is excitement on the top, but these are not crystal 
clear speakers on the top end. So something like the Klipsch is gonna be much more forward in the upper mid-range than these Polks are. So when I tested these with Dirac or ran the Dirac setup, these tested out as full range speakers. I don't think they're at their best though if they don't have a high pass filter on them. I think one can tighten up the bass a bit, especially for music. So if you put a high pass filter on these, maybe around 70 hertz like I did, you can tighten up that bass a little bit. It gets a little cleaner in the, I almost said in the rear end, on the bottom end. And these become a very capable music speaker. So let's just get this out of the way. They're great home theater speakers. Dialogue is clear, but a little warmer. There is much less of a tendency for this speaker to have sibilance and S's and things like that. The dialogue is gonna seem natural. If you put another speaker up there, something like the Yamo Concert Series, the Emotiva Series, the Clip Series, there's going to be a difference as far as how the dialogue sounds. All those other speakers are gonna be more forward, clear, mm, a little bit in your face. Cool thing about this speaker, the whole series, the mid-range is not harsh, which is nice. Sometimes home theater speakers can have a bit of a harsh mid-range, which is good for dialogue in some movies, but for music that can be mm, not my cup of tea. The towers remind me a bit of the Yamo S, like 806, 807, 808, 809, I can't remember exactly the model numbers. They remind me a bit of those as far as the sound signature. I think the Polks are, well, I don't think, I know the Polks are built way better. It's an MDF cabinet, heavier cabinet, better bracing. It gives me that vibe though, as I had with the Yamo, and I like the Yamos a lot. This is just a step up, less resonance from the cabinet, more extended bass, Cleaner through the mid-range, cleaner through the bass, much cleaner if you put a high-pass filter on it. Very capable speakers. They're more expensive, of course, but they are better in every way than the Yamo S-Series. The bookshelves are very impressive, the ES-15s. I haven't heard the ES-20s, but they wouldn't be embarrassed at all if they were running front channel duties, the ES-15s. I imagine the ES-20s would even be doing a better job of that. I kind of feel like the ES-15s may be a bit much for rear surrounds. You can mount them on the wall, but this is not a shallow speaker. At nearly 10 inches sticking out from the wall, this could get knocked off. In a household like mine, someone's knocking this off the wall. You could figure out a way to mount this on a stand I have actually done that with some TV mounts. So I took some cheap TV, you know, the wall mounts that you can kind of, they extend from the wall. And this was in my daughter's room. And then what I did was I slid that up underneath here, wrapped some tape around it. And then so I actually have these, not these, the S series hanging from the wall in my daughter's room. And then she can kind of push them out, pull them around. It's not a bad setup actually. So if you're a little bit creative, you can hang these from the wall, no problem. And you can do it pretty cheap. I think those TV mounts were only about 20 bucks a piece or something like that. So they will work. These speakers are almost too good to be surrounds, but they obviously can be surrounds. When these go on sale, they're a very compelling, but even at $300, these are a pretty compelling bookshelf. Sound signature, again, is a bit on the warmer side. These aren't nearly as sloppy in the bass as the S series are. I was very happy with these, because I, I didn't love the S15s. I do love the ES15s. So I think the weak link in this system is a subwoofer. Um, at 100 watts RMS, it goes boom. It was able to get going upstairs in my theater room. It's not really a theater room, it's a kid's playroom. But it's really more of a theater room now than anything else, because I've kind of gotten rid of all the toys and stuff. At $400, retail there are if you spend a little bit more there's subs that are more powerful have way more features and sound better i wouldn't choose this subwoofer if you're going to be listening to much music if it's just home theater and that's all you're doing not really that big of an issue but at 400 dollars, i would polk also makes a subwoofer called the ps 
10 I think for 130 bucks. I had another Polk subwoofer and it had all sorts of DSP stuff. So you could change phase where it was in the room and things like that. This subwoofer really has a low pass filter like every subwoofer has. A phase switch, so zero or 180 degrees. And that's really it. Not jam packed with features. It looks good, but there's not a ton of features here. Sometimes Polk will even run deals during holidays where they will significantly lower the cost of the subwoofer. For movies, I think it's fine. I did have it bottoming out pretty easily when I was watching Rise of Skywalker. And then for whatever reason, when spaceships go overhead, it's always super low. This also only goes down to 30 hertz. So if you're wanting that 20 to 30 area, you're not gonna get it with the subwoofer. I think it's okay for movies. I didn't love it for music, unless you turn it way, 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 way down. Way down way down and you got to blend it really well but if i'm doing 50 50 music in the home theater i'm probably looking at a different subwoofer a lot of competition emotiva they have the t0 plus towers they also have the t1 plus those are going to be more expensive than the towers here in the pool you also have offerings from svs that's going to be more expensive also have offerings from yamo and klipsch the Yamo S series is probably the most closely, it's the series that sounds the most close to these. These are better. These are much better than the Yamo. These are different from the Emotiva. These are different from the SVS. These are different from the Klipsch. So they all have their own kind of signature. I like the ES series signature because it's not too harsh. Some speakers in this price category have a tendency to be fatiguing. And conversely, if they're not fatiguing, they have a tendency to be a bit muddled in the mid-range. The mid-range on the Signature Elite speakers is not fatiguing. It's clear, but it leans warm and lush, but it's still good enough and actually very pleasant for dialogue. Overall, I really, like the sound signature from this speaker because it's not going to offend anybody. Finite details are not going to be as apparent on the ES series versus some of the competition. But that's okay because in the long term I actually would prefer to have something like this than something that's a little bit fatiguing. I think the center channel and the ES 15s, the bookshelves, are kind of the star of the show here. The center is really something special. In such a small package, there is so much sound that comes out of this, this thing. I just love it. I love the multiple drivers. I love the size. I love the fact that you can hang it on the wall. If you do that, though, I would put some foamy pads on here or something that's going to keep it from rattling against the wall. Probably it's not going to rattle too terribly bad, but you might as well just get some of those little foam things or get some of that blue tack. Maybe, maybe if you have some Play-Doh, just push the Play-Doh against it. Everybody has Play-Doh laying around if they have some kids. Really like the center. Really like the ES-15s. Since I do listen to a ton of music though, I would personally, if I was keeping the towers, I'd cross them over much higher than they actually roll off. So that, that bass, the woofers don't need to move around so much. I get some of the clarity back in the bass. A lot about this system to like for $1,500 or $1,570, ton of it to like. And if you don't want to go through the trouble of trying to cherry pick out some speakers, this is a great way to get going. But don't think that you need to get the towers. You can get the center, which I really, I really recommend the center, it's very good. You get the ES-15s for fronts. You could get the ES-20s for fronts. You get another set for the rears. Bear in mind though, they're gonna stick out a fair bit from the wall. So you have like a corner or something like that that you can kind of hide them away. Or if you wanted to use my trick, get some of those TV wall mount things and you can put them on the side and kind of move them around. That's what I would recommend if you're gonna get those. Um, actually, it works out pretty well. If you're wanting a ton of clean base, deeply extended, I may look elsewhere for a subwoofer. As a whole set, it's gonna be doing fine if you're mostly movie watching in a medium sized room. Keep in mind, when you really stress this subwoofer, it's gonna bottom out. Not as quick as other subwoofers are heard, I've heard, not as articulate, but it gets the job done. At $1,500, I'd 
I don't really have a problem recommending this. You could also wait till this thing goes on sale individually. You don't have to use the ES15s as surrounds. If you want to have timber matched speakers though, ES15s I think are the smallest speaker within this bunch. I think they also have a Atmos speaker that you can put on top of the tower speakers. Significant step up from the S series, in my opinion. I think Polk is doing great things. All of their speakers have improved. The XT series are way better than the T series. The ES speakers are way better than the S series. Reserves are pretty fantastic too. So I'm really impressed with what Polk is doing. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cheap Audio Man. Every single night, Patreon only Zoom, Patreon only Facebook, Patreon, we have Patreon stuff, okay? You can also well, use the affiliate links. I will link these to Polk's website. I don't have an affiliate relationship with Polk. Also link them through Crutchfield and some other places. You can also sign up for Amazon Music or Tidal. Links in the description. Click on the link, sign up. If you do, I'll get a couple of dollars, even if it's only for a trial. Also have the thanks button down by the share button. If you got any value out of this, you can give me a couple of bucks, buy me a cup of coffee, but don't feel compelled to do that. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu unless you're listening to it through your new Polk Signature Elite Home Theater 5.1 system. And fill your soul with happiness. Listen to some music too. And fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. <laughs>